everyone. Welcome back to the Grantus podcast. It's Grant and I'm here with a special guest, Christina. Hey. Um, apologies for the last episode. I was checking my card when I was like making or like setting up for this episode and I realized that like the sound files from my like recording or like sound interface didn't record for Madison's episode. So that entire video was like just the sound from the camera which is not the best and you can hear the fuzz. So I'll try to reduce the sound for that, but I'm not like a sound tech. And it's actually ironic because in the last episode, I literally mentioned the fact that I wanted to do my episode first so that I could get the hang of it. And then here I go. And as I'm mentioning that, I'm literally messing up the video for Madison. Um, But I'm not going to refilm it because it would not be the same. So I'm just going to upload that one. And Madison's going to get another episode anyway. So like first video, whatever. Um, I'm actually on my handheld recorder this episode instead of the other one because I don't trust the other one to do its job now. Like, I'm going to need to figure out why that happened. Um, but that aside, I didn't come up with a theme song for Christina. Um, I was going to play one, but, you know, if I were to pick one, I would pick Who Let the Dogs Out or... Oh my god, wait, why? Or, um, Nightingale by Demi Lovato. Okay, I can take the second one. Yeah, first things first, we have Christina here. She is a recent graduate of USC. Um, Recently, meaning like literally this past December, um, she graduated with a major in health and human sciences. I, how many ma- minors did you have? And I'll try to guess them. I had two minors. Occupational science? Mm-hmm. Nutrition? No, that's Rachel's that was Rachel's dropped dropped minor. One. It's um, health and, no wait, crap. Healthcare studies. Yeah. Okay um in addition to that she is from san jose um i she did troy camp right i did um sh- do i mention the one that starts with k or camp kesson yeah yeah i mean okay. yeah i was in camp, camp kesson. kesson um and then spirit and usc competitive cheer <laughs> she was one of those she was on the team with me and rachel and molly and um, I think she was actually on the, the team the year before that as well. Like your name was on the roster for yeah, the year before. Yeah, I was. But we didn't like, we weren't active until my freshman year and her sophomore year. That was when we had like a full season. And then the second half of that school year, we all transitioned to spirit together. So that's just more of the lore behind us. But first things first, did you just want to talk about your academic path and like where that's going to lead you for like your career later on omg okay wait where do i start like you're talking like high school or just college oh like just college college probably okay um so yeah i came into usc fall 2020 as a freshman and i um planned on majoring in health and human sciences i really thought i was going to switch out of that major because it, i just like put it down to put it down when i was applying really last minute and then i ended up really liking it because it's like super flexible in like the courses that you can take just because it's like geared towards anyone who's like pre-med or pre-health and i'm pre-pa so all of the like lower division classes and all the prereqs whatever that i needed to take and the upper divs that i needed to take for pa school ended up counting and so it was just like so easy to stay that i never switched out and Because there was so much flexibility in, like, what I could take, really. I was able to pick up two minors. So, like Grant said, occupational science. And that's actually where I became friends with one of our teammates, Joyce. Um, So I met her before we were both on the team. And then I also have a minor in healthcare studies where you just take a bunch of classes from, like, doctors. And they're super cool and, like, specialized. Um, Yeah, like I said before, I'm pre-PA, so uh pa school is like two to three years after undergrad and they require a lot of like patient care hours so during undergrad i was also like working as an allergy tech and an ma and then i like worked a few other random jobs to get like healthcare hours and whatnot so yeah nice okay and apart from that you are from san jose and you have a very special dog <gasps> oh named God. Forrest. Yes. But I don't know him as Forrest. I know him as Pookie. Pookie. Yeah, it's okay. Everyone knows him as Pookie and no one knows him as Forrest. So. Yeah. He has an Instagram account. You should go follow it. It's called Forest of the Day. It's run by Christina, but primarily Chris Turtle. Yes. Um, who is um, Christina's sister. And 
Um, Forrest is just a very special dog. He is um, very cute. Um, he doesn't do much, but he also does everything, if that makes sense. Yeah, so he's like a really big couch potato. He's not like an outdoor dog. Sometimes we'll try to like open up like the sliding door to the backyard for him to like go and hang out and he'll just like claw at the door because he all he does all day is like sit on the couch and make faces. So. Yeah, it actually got to a point where I've only seen pictures of him like either laying on the couch or like someone holding him. So I thought for the longest time that he could not walk. And then I think I saw a video of him like standing up and I was like, he can do that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, he has a lot of different talents. Yes, like standing, sitting, sleeping, he, napping. He can sit, but he can't lay down. He's never Ooh. been able to do that one. Existing. He's very good yeah. at existing. Oh, he's really good at like wearing sweaters too. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, yeah. Um, I only bring that up because that will have relevance like a little bit later. But honestly, this episode is a little bit unstructured because as mentioned in the last episode, I removed one of the segments, which was um, soapboxes. And I'm just going to take the points from soapboxes and just make it the talking points for the episode and then the other segments will take like precedence like true false rapid fire etc um firstly i want to bring up my first grievance which is that dangle earrings for guys are so ugly why are you still wearing them i went to the gym the other day and i saw a dangle earring that was a cross and i was like what year is it wait is this targeted like no it's not at a person i know oh like, really it's just um someone that i saw wow. i was like okay because like who okay well first of all like i think like piercing your ears now like as a guy i wouldn't say it's like that out of the ordinary anymore the only thing is is that you have to be very careful with the earring that you get um i think like the diamond earring has always been like a thing that's like never not been a thing yeah then i think in 2015 the thing was like a black stud like you'd get a stud yeah um now i would say the regular is maybe like a tiny hoop like like mm -hmm. a mini metal hoop but in 2019 the thing was like the dangle earring and i just thought we got rid of that yeah i like i think they're kind of ugly and they normally come out like really cringy just like the look in general so you do have to be very careful when you wear them and i do think they're mm -hmm. a bit outdated but you know who am i to say anything it's just it also going back to like the outdated thing it's like the way that they style it with what they're wearing yeah they'll wear like the joggers that are like a little too tight around the calf and then like um Maybe not even a beanie, just like a baseball cap. I think like if you don't have the hair to rock it with the like the earring, I, I don't know. Yeah. Or like, oh, when people wear like t-shirts that are a little too long, like, oh, I'm just like thinking about the combination of factors that make a dangle earring like not okay. Yeah, I, I would say like most of the time to all the time, dangling earrings are just not the vibe. So yeah. Yeah. Um, next point. Rachel O from Washington, fuck you. Like, please, like, go get some help because, Wait. um, I'll and I'll tell you. Okay. Um, I was opening my Dove chocolate the other day, as I do, because I allow myself two squares every day, and I like to read the little quotes because some of them are a little fun. Like, they give you a little like, oh, like, love is all around you. Like, take advantage of it or something, something stupid like that. And mm -hmm. like, I always look forward to like what it says on the outside, what it says on the inside. But the thing is, is like, Dove chocolate's not gonna spend money on like um that many phrases just because like they have they produce so many pieces of chocolate every single day so it's like there's going to be repeated phrases but the one that i get most often is this stupid ass quote by rachel o from washington it says keep life moving forward looking backward is only for time travelers oh i think that's kind of sweet no it's not it doesn't even make any sense keep life moving forward looking backward is only for time travels don't say stagnant and i feel like that applies to so many like aspects of your life you know so depending on the time of the day it's always relevant i think keep life moving forward would have been enough though yeah i agree i think it's a bit excessive the looking backward is only for time travelers i was like what the fuck yeah i can see where you think that the second part is dumb because she definitely is not needed but you know overall i feel like they were trying with that one they definitely did try um but there are other ones that just like compared to that one like Rachel O from Washington, like, I don't even know how her quote got approved. I'm so sorry. Count your days, girl. Um, Next point. Sorry, I'm flying through these, but one of these points is going to take literally like 20 minutes. So don't even worry about it. Um, If you celebrate April Fool's Day, grow the fuck up. Because <laughs> why am I waking up on April Fool's and people are telling me shit? And then last minute, they're like, I was joking. It's April Fool's. I want to know what we're doing. Like... 
I can't, I'm trying to think of a specific example where, where someone was like, oh, someone was like talking to me. I was asking someone a question about like a class like project that we had to turn in about like what the specifics, like the deliverables were. And they gave me like this long ass paragraph of like the details. And I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. And they're like, I actually just made the whole thing up. April Fool's. Oh my God. What? Wait, yeah. No, I feel like that is a little Grow excessive. up. Like why? Like even if it's just for like a little joke, like. April Fool's Day is not a real holiday. Like, please grow up. I think it, like, it could be funny if you're, like, just, like, joking about really small things. But if you have to put in that much effort, no, yeah, I'm that, like, bro, like, no, that's it's crazy. Not. If you do, like, a little cute, like, fun little, like, sarcastic joke where, like, it's, like, oh, like, April Fool's. But it, like, literally wasn't anything. Like, okay, whatever. Like, it's, like, a tongue-in-cheek thing. And other exception, if you're, like, a elementary school teacher and you're, like, pranking your kids or, like, kids yeah. prank each other. But if you're at your big age of, like, 22 and you're trying to pull a fast one over me for April Fool's Day, the hell? Yeah. Agreed. Um, next one. Um, this one is contested, like, um, between me and Christina. We both set our piece on this. But no, 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 no. no. Not, the, not the next one. Not the next one. Oh, okay. okay. Um, this, this one. I don't think balayages are real. I'm so sorry. I don't think they're real. Every single time someone has gotten a balayage, it has never turned out right how they say it's going to. Like, they show me the picture, and then when they go to get the balayage, it doesn't look anything like the picture. Like, it doesn't look anything like the pictures, and it looks bad? Yes. Afterwards? Oh. It's always, like, patchy. Like, the bleach job is always patchy. Okay, like, I, I don't know... I don't know how to answer this question because I also don't really know what a balayage is. Because you can get like a balayage or like baby lights, and it's the de de definition. Yeah, because like I also had my hair dyed for like the majority of college, and I always got baby lights. But people call it like balayage too, and I don't know. I think it's like a different way of like dyeing it, like the technique. Because like baby lights yeah, might yeah, be yeah. like hand painted, but so no balayage really is, is free hand painting. Yeah, oh. highlights onto the hair. Okay, but it's the thing is, it's like. The reference photos never look like how the person who gets it, like, they look. Wait. Like, whenever they're like, oh, I'm getting a balayage, they show me the pictures, and it's, like, some gradiated ombre bleach that's, like, smooth or, like, blended. And then they're like, oh, yeah, it's super cool because, like, you don't need to, like, maintain it. Like, if it grows out, it looks oh. natural. And, it, like, um, it's not like a, a distinct, like, oh, this is where your roots start and this is where the ends start. It's like, oh, like, as it grows out, like, it's very natural how the balayage, like, fizzles out. Uh-huh. But whenever I see them get it, it's always, like, fucked up. Okay, well, your hair lady is, like, <laughs> built different, I uh, think. Yeah. No, I agree, though. I think that, like, a lot of the times, like, balayage and, like, just, like, dyeing your hair can go wrong if you're, like, bleaching mm. it just because, like, you need to know, like, like, if you're an Asian girl, like, don't go to, like, a girl that only does, like, white people hair because, like, your the undertone of your hair is more yellow, so it's going to come out, like, busted and, like, vice versa, you know? Um, I think do your research before you get your hair dyed but i do agree that there's a lot of room for like air when it comes to dyeing your hair in general um i will say probably the reason that um i've experienced so many fucked up balayages is because i'm from the south so it might be a better like situation over here with the hairdressers but over in the south like people go to some pretty shady places and also like social media managing wasn't a thing when people were getting balayages in high school yeah like there wasn't as many like hair ladies on social media like putting their shit out there so you would literally go to a studio and like yeah just like fuck yourself over basically because like that's like your hair bro like if i'm a guy and i'm getting my dyed hair like that hair is gonna grow out in a year but yeah. like oh shit like i can just think of all the people that fucked up their hair and then they just had to dye it back immediately yeah i agree Ugh. i i don't know like i feel like in san jose like so many people like it's like all asian girls and so many of them just like have your hair their hair dye just because that's like i don't know like the culture or whatever so i feel like everyone from where i grew up knows where to go when it comes to like a good hair salon but i do agree i feel like at the end of the day for me at least it was not worth it because my hair is so much thinner than it was before and now um i'm trying to grow it back because i've like literally half my head of hair so <laughs> don't dye your hair guys and now that i've like spread all that negativity in the world my last point is i need to stop being a mean girl like you're not though no but i've been hating recently i think this past week i've hated so much on like i don't even know like I've talked major shit on a lot of people these past few days. <laughs> um, and I think I just need to stop spreading negativity for a little bit. For mm -hmm. a little bit. I'll go back to it eventually. I just think now I need to spread positivity because it has been pretty neg <coughs> a negative few days in, 
in regards to the the vibes that I'm spreading out. Yeah, you know, I feel like everything in moderation, like you can be a hater every once in a while, but I mean, at least you're self-aware. No, but that's the thing. Like, I think, and I was um, discussing this with one of like these um, recruiters today because I went to like a guest speaker session for my class and they were talking about living life in extremes. Like some people balance their lives like over a day, but some Mm -hmm. people balance their time over like a year. So for example, like going to work, for like an accounting firm, you're going to have a busy season for January, February, March, April. Yeah. And you're going to be working your ass off for those four months, but the rest of the year is going to be like really chill. Mm -hmm. And some people can't stand that. Like some people would rather have like a nine to five and then like you're off from five to like whatever and you it's consistent like over the year. Yeah. So with me, it's like, would I rather be like an equal amount of hate and negativity each day or would I rather be negative for a couple of days and then positive the rest? And I think I would rather be the second and be in like a negative, like hating era and like talking shit and then just like go revert to. Yeah, no, I think that makes the most sense because I feel like in certain times of your life, you're just more of a hater given what's going on around you. And at certain times you're not, you know, so I don't think it'd be reasonable to be like, yeah, like I'm going to hate the exact same amount, like consistently, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm going to be this amount of negative. Yeah, like that doesn't seem to make sense. It definitely has to do with like the circumstances too and like the amount of stress um that i'm under although i'm not like super stressed that's not the situation i just mean like there have been a lot of like things that have occurred these past couple of days that have caused me to lash out and spread negativity (laughs) um and not to say that i'm not empathetic like people have definitely thought that i'm like emotionless and like i don't care about people's feelings i promise you marissa (laughs) no i was gonna say like we'll get into that later um i was gonna say like people think i'm like literally just like mean for no reason but i promise you i do have a heart like i do see the value of like people and like the amount of like i'm like an empath no i'm just kidding um no i that's sweet no like i genuinely do like like have realized the weight of my words and like i i think i do know when to shut the fuck up um and when like criticism and stuff is warranted um but i will say i do like shooting the shit with christina like Mm -hmm. christina and i live maybe 20 feet away from each other so we talk a lot and the great thing is is because she's no longer like at usc like there's no overlap not that she like did like not that she like would relay the information i gave her anyways but like but now there's really no overlap yeah. because all i do is work and go home and so like she can talk shit to me i can talk shit to her and it's yeah. just like event sesh so fun which I appreciate. but that's also not the only thing that we do like we're still like i would say pretty good friends <laughs> um and yeah so that's all the talking points that I have. Um, I guess we can go into our first segment, which is called Nicole Leno. No, <laughs> oh my God! No, well, I can go. The mic. Oh, I'm so okay. sorry. Sorry. I'm so, sorry. so um, here's what I have to say. Like, um, a lot of people have been making TikToks about Nicole Leno not getting into UCLA, and a lot, a lot of people have been making TikToks about the people reacting to that. I'm just gonna say my piece. I, first of all, I want to let Nicole rest because, like, the amount of people that keep on bringing up the fact that she didn't get into UCLA is, like, a lot. Like, it's a lot. And she's just trying to, like, grieve. And I think she's already gotten over it and she's happy to go to STSU. Um, That being said, I do recognize that I am contributing to that pool of the (laughs) amount of people that keep on bringing it up. But I want to say my piece because this is something that I've been following for so long. And I think I have a unique perspective because, like, I like am now in california and i actually know the demographic of people that go to ucla and i know people's experience going there like i still know the application process very well i i've like watched nicole for a while i know exactly what she applied for and like like all of her stats well not all of her stats but like most of like her stats and what might have gone into her application so i just wanted to analyze that um (laughs) but i feel like in general like once you hit college you kind of know what goes into a college application more so than 12 year olds and 13 year olds that are literally up in arms at the fact that their favorite influencer didn't get into a very selective college the number one public university like so i think y'all just need to calm down and understand how the admissions process really works and even though no one asked for this um i'm jobless and i did my research you're not jobless what the hell? okay that's true um for the record i have two full-time offers lined up from reputable firms for after graduation so you can find me but like um i just wanted to go over this because i thought it was really interesting and i'll mention my stats too you don't have to like i'll mention only mine. if you want to um but let's start out with nicole Leno, the facts Ooh. so <clears throat> first question i had 
was why didn't she apply to USC even just to shoot high? USC has a very, okay, well, both USC and UCLA have a very holistic process when reviewing their applications. And I'm honestly sure she would have just as good of a chance getting into USC as UCLA. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe even better because I feel like USC kind of does analyze like the famous people more than UCLA does. Because USC is very much about the networking and the connections Mm -hmm. and the amount of press they could bring to USC's admissions if Nicole went here. I think it wouldn't be as significant as an A-list celebrity, but I think USC does take a little bit more consideration than UCLA in the demographic that I've seen that goes to USC versus UCLA. Yeah. Would you agree with that? I do. And I feel like, I don't know why she didn't, she never seemed like she was interested in USC. I know. She only applied to UCs and Cal, like in Cal, yeah. what is it called? Is it Cal's? Um, like Cal the States? Cal States. Yeah. I do feel like USC is like a lot more expensive than any other college. That's true. Especially because like she's in state. But she wasn't going to get a scholarship from those schools anyway. Yeah, exactly. So maybe like that played into it, which makes a lot of sense. Because like if you're out of state and you're applying to UCLA, it's going to be like around kind of the same amount as like USC, I'm assuming, just because like out of state is so expensive, but she'd be paying in state. And I feel like that like the difference between um like a public school versus a private school in california is like very very stark so yeah Yeah. and even if money was an issue i'm sure she could apply for however many scholarships like yeah on that same note of not applying to usc um the majors that she applied for were dance communications and film or like media studies which USC is quite literally the best school for all three of those. Annenberg is like number one. Yeah. Kaufman is better than UCLA's dance program by far. Mm -hmm. And SCA is better than UCLA's film school. Yeah. Which I also found was interesting. I didn't even know that UCLA had like a dance like... I didn't know either. Um, Not until like, um, I'm not going to say why I was on their campus and why I listened to this campus tour. Um, We're going to just record that. But I did find out that they had a dance program and I like laughed it off because like, I was like, oh, like I didn't think they had a dance program. And someone was like, oh no, it's really good. But then I was like, but is it though? Is it comparable to USC is what I mean with like the amount of like dancers, professional like working industry dancers that we turn out and like the people that we like recruit to come to Kaufman and the teachers that we bring in in the classes that we have like aren't there like a bunch of supplements that you need to that's do what i'm saying you? yeah I, like what would her, her supplements have been yeah exactly her um get ready with me I don't know. <laughs> um that's not to be mean i'm sorry i'm just genuinely <laughs> saying like if if she was studying film and media studies it would not be a film degree it would be like media studies like literally yeah it, that would be in annenberg still i don't think she applied for dance at UCLA because while it is a good school for dance it has supplemental materials and she never once talked about her supplements I think that makes the most sense too to apply like if she at a bunch of different schools is applying for different majors and one of them has not the same amount of supplements as the other I would apply for the one that's easier personally just to know that I like got in and like not to waste time with like the supplements so I would also assume that's what she did it's the fact that like um and actually Christina reminded me of this because I was kind of wondering why she wanted to go to college um you were talking about the fact that like she wasn't really going to college to get break into any any industry in specific or like work yeah because she could get any job she wanted to yeah it's about the fact that like her parents specifically wanted her to get a degree to like fall back on in case like her youtube career does not have longevity Mm -hmm. yeah i feel like in general with like influencers and stuff like that i'm assuming that's what like most reasonable parents want their kids to do and i feel like her and her mom probably value her having those like normal like experiences as an adult you know like everyone after high school goes to college and like i don't know has studies but also has like a good time and experiences x things and so I think the experience is also a big part of it, I'd assume. And I feel like it's unfortunate because I really do love Nicole. And I like, she's like, she seems like such a good kid. I remember watching her when she was like still in elementary school and being like, oh my gosh, like she's so little and she's so good. Like I'm so excited to see her grow up. And I I do agree, you know, and I feel like sometimes when you're like, I hate to say it, but when you're like young and you grow up and you have really good life experiences and it's like kind of difficult to like write a personal statement that may be a little different from what like the next person can write if that makes any sense no yeah i think honestly she was she was doomed from the start because the high school that she goes to only allows their students to take six classes a year what six classes a year 
six what that's, that's crazy yeah. oh my god and i'll tell you exactly all the classes she took each year because she was that public about it um freshman year she took spanish two honors geometry honors tv production dance english and chemistry honors mm. honestly that's not that out of the ordinary although dance does take an entire period that could have been devoted to another academic class and tv production doesn't really seem applicable like yeah. if you put tv production on your transcript that's not jumping out to any admissions people and i don't think it's helping you in any way with your like T with your media studies application sophomore year she took ap chem which good on her mm -hmm. spanish three honors um english algebra two honors and then she took two periods again one for dance and then one for asb i know some schools that do asb where it's not a class and you can just do it after school and some asb is really not that serious so presenting the fact that you did asb on your like resume and your college application could mean a number of different things yeah and at like my high school if you did asb like let's say you took six classes right asb would be your seventh class so you can't supplement it for like something else mm. yeah it's and it's also it. yeah it's the fact that like she devoted so much time to asb as an yeah. extracurricular but i don't think it would have been as reflective if she had just like exchanged asb for another academic class taken mm -hmm. more ap's and then done like two extracurriculars on the side that were not as time committing but still kind of beef up her resume a little bit more. yeah i agree i feel like when you're like yeah, when you're trying to beef up your resume in high school, at least, you know, it's like so competitive. So you want to like work smarter, not harder. Like if ASB is time consuming and you like it, but you don't have like, sorry to say, but like a leadership position, then like maybe like take a step back from ASB. Not like, not that you shouldn't be involved, but you know, just know where to Draw put your time and energy so that you're yeah. like maximizing your potential. Well, I took one my sophomore year like only one sophomore year but this isn't like the fact that you weren't allowed to take um ap's until you were a junior unless oh. you took a pre-ap your freshman what? year and but it was also the fact that we were taking eight classes so my junior oh. and senior year i could make it up wow like okay. i took three ap's my junior year and then it took five my senior year so like oh my god <laughs> it was like it honestly was not that hard but um oh interesting like to each their own junior year she took ap lang I think AP Lang is easy. It um, is. <laughs> she took pre-calc, ceramics, ASB, US history, again, no honors or high honors, and then AP environmental science, which I also think is easy. Ew. Senior year, this was like literally the craziest thing I'd ever heard. She only took five classes her senior what? year. Oh, wait, I did too. <laughs> wait, but I... <laughs> but here, here's the kicker. She took AP Lit, um, and then she took AP Calculus. Do I know she took AB or BC? She took AB for sure. She, uh, that's what I thought too, because like, it's very uncommon, Like I think, for schools over here where you, we would jump from pre-calc to BC. I personally, my high school did that. They would take the top half of pre or the top half of the pre-calc class uh -huh. would go to BC, and the lower half would go to AB Dude, your senior year. my high school... So... I took AB sophomore year and BC junior year, but the class... That's what I was wondering. It's the same thing. Yeah. They just add on like two topics. Exactly. It's like Taylor series and something Why else. Why would you but do that? But the class below me, um, like so Grant's age, people in Grant's age, they were able to skip from like pre-calc to BC. And so they were like, sophomores taking BC. I was like, oh my God, this is nice. No. But yeah. And then in addition to AP Lit and AP Calc, she took Gov and Econ. Which, if you're going to take Gov and Econ, why would you not take AP Gov and AP Micro Wait, Macro? Oh, she didn't take AP for Gov and Econ? No, just it's a Gov Dude, and Econ class. The AP version was really easy. That's like, what I'm, I'm not even going to like it. It's so ridiculously easy. easy. So easy. If yeah. you take that and you don't pass it, I'm sorry. And then her last two classes out of the five was ASB again. Yeah. We've already set our piece on that. And work experience. That's They yeah. allow seniors to make one of their periods work. So you can get a job and like leave school early to do a job after school. What? Nicole Leno's job is YouTube. Uh-huh. Or whatever side quest she was doing. Like, That's so interesting. Apart from that. Her resume, too fucking big. Like we, we already know she has so much stuff on her resume. Like, yeah. So that's fine. I'm not going to do too much on her parents because obviously her parents have raised her and Christian very, very well. Yeah. But I think they might have allowed her expectations to be set too high. Um, yeah i and i also think that with just like taking class like ap classes in high school they like hype it up to be harder than it actually is yeah. so at the end of the day you I, should just like fuck it and take it and you'll probably be fine you know yeah and i don't think her mental health would have suffered either because like i would have cut her down to one youtube video a week hired an editor and put yeah. her in more ap classes she does go to a public school but i've looked at the ap's available and i think she could have added way more mm -hmm. like i literally found the document that they had <laughs> for like the ap classes that they are like that they offered 
Um, so instead of taking like ASB, TV production, ceramics, US history, gov, and econ, she took it, she could have taken A push, AP gov, AP econ, micro macro is literally the easiest class yeah. to have taken. AP world history even is really easy. World, yeah. AP stats is so fucking easy. The AP stats is easier than AP <laughs> lang and AP environmental science and easier. That class, okay, whatever. She could have taken AP psych. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, AP psych, I heard, I don't even know if they had it at my school. I just knew it was like ridiculously easy. Yeah. And then if she was going to take AP chem, she might as well have taken like AP bio or AP human geography, like just to get those out of the way. Like, I remember this dude that I was chit chatting with at one point. He told me that AP, he took AP stats like senior year of high school and it was like so, so hard. And that's when I knew <laughs> <laughs> we had to cut it. <laughs> Closing notes though, like truly though, my heart goes out to her. And yeah. although I did grow up Catholic and, and not religious anymore, I honestly think God planned to have her go to SDSU in some way. Um, just like how it was my plan to go to USC. Mm -hmm. I think her passion is in these projects and side quests that she does um, and that she works on and she loves making content for people. And I honestly don't think she would have time to do that if she went to a school like UCLA. Yeah. Not saying that her fans wouldn't be 100% supportive if she did step away from, you, um, from YouTube for a little bit to focus on her college experience. I'm just saying like right now she's in a place and at SDSU she will be in a place to do what she loves on all accounts and she can have it all if she goes to SDSU and even if it's not the number one public university it's still a great school with a great program and great dance team and I honestly think like SDSU is giving her everything that she needs yeah I agree I only know like UCLA kind of like from a STEM aspect um like some of my friends go there and I just know like great deflation is kind of you know Kicking bad them. there and they're yeah i don't know i just know a lot of people that are like stressed there and they're always like oh my god there are like never enough resources and i agree like given what nicole wants to do like sdsu has still like such great like athletic teams it's a fun school it's in a great place she's going to have like the best time there i think and again, UCLA will do just fine without her. The amount of people that are saying like UCLA like lost a good one or whatever. People are hella hating on them. But like Nicole is just one drop in the ocean. Yeah. Like they're literally number one and turn out so many successful people. So I think they're doing like fine. Just to give my stats, um, just so you know, that like I know what I'm talking about. Give a little ethos, if you will. <laughs> um, I don't know that I got a 4.0 because I we had a 100 point scale at my school. What the hell? No, I don't, I don't <laughs> know what my 4.0 um, GPA oh my is because we had a 100 point scale. So I'm just going to read these out. Um, if someone afterwards wants to convert these, you can. But I got a 97.625 weighted GPA out of 100, um, which if it's a weighted, plus. you can go over 100. Um, uh -huh. Unweighted, it was a 94. Again, I don't know what that is on a 4.0 scale, what that converts to, but no. whatever. Testing, um, I got a 1450 on my SAT, so not amazing, but like still like competitive. It's so much better than my <laughs> No, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. And then my school, um, because I went to school in the South, they made us take the ACT too, even though I wanted to take the SAT. So I got a 33 on my ACT, which is literally like convertible to a 1450. So it's mm -hmm. like literally the same score. Um, APs, I took AP World History, AP Bio, Spanish Language, Physics 1, Micro, Macro, Chem, Calc, BC, and Stats, and I passed 7 out of 10 of those. Um, extracurriculars, I was National Honor Society President, National Spanish Honor Society President. Bleep! 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 I'm not much <laughs> mystery. Um, I was captain of Immaculata House, which my, my senior year, our, um, school implemented, like, a house system for the first time, which basically, like, replaced, like, student body, like, president, wow. whatever. So I was, like basically like president of my house um i was a head peer mentor student ambassador scioli co-captain oh i had over 100 service hours because we went to a catholic school so like mm -hmm. i wasn't gonna not put that on my application even yeah though i had to do it um spanish club french club events chair and then i was on varsity tennis for a little bit holy shit um applied major for all of the schools i applied for math and then i was looking at pre-med for them but like that doesn't really factor into your application so that's my stats did you want to oh mention my yours? god yeah i will so i went to like a public school in california so we did like the 4.0 scale my unweighed gpa was a 3.97 and then my weight was like a 4.71 and then I took, sophomore year, I took AP Calc, AB, and then World History AP, and we call it WAP. And then junior year, I took A Push, um, AP Calc BC, and then AP Laying. Senior year, I took AP Gov, AP Econ, and um, AP Lit. And then I was also in like a dual credit program. So wow. half of the week, I would be at like a community college taking classes. So I think I had 
between like 37 to like 40 um, college class units um, when I finished high school. And so that's why every time I met with my freaking advisor at USC, they always thought I was a transfer student and they'd always try to confuse me. Um, so LOL. But I think at USC, you can only like transfer in a certain amount too. No, so it I doesn't know. even matter. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They, they like, they're so like greedy for money. They want you to take all of your classes with yeah. them. Yeah. Which is why I'm glad I got in my freshman year because no, I didn't have to transfer any credits. I was in key club for four years i was secretary okay. and i was president for Collect two years <laughs> i was um junior exchange i think like secretary and vice president uh that's like another service club i was like girls for a change president nice. for a few years i think and then um all the clubs that i did i think i i did them for like the entirety of high school but i don't think i I definitely tried a lot of clubs when I first joined, and I really only stuck to those three. And then I was on the cheer team freshman and sophomore year, and then I was captain sophomore year, and then I quit after because there was so much drama. And then I also had cancer, and I also didn't want to deal with that. Mainly the drama after I came back to school because, like, I feel like people in, like, any high school, like, cheer team, they're always, like they have like so much audacity and they always be doing like the craziest <laughs> stuff i'm like what are you even talking about like i literally remember sophomore year so my high school cheer team we had like a snapchat group chat and girls <laughs> would try to pick fights with me because uh, it was like me and my co-captain and like th i they would blow up the chat but like if you know with snapchat like every time you even start typing you get a notification so i would literally tell them like hey like yo like i'm literally gonna pull you let's have this conversation elsewhere let me take this over text like a private conversation on snapchat so we're not freaking killing everyone else's phones so i'd sit there like i'd spend like hours of my day just like arguing with people for no freaking reason and i'm like, like bro like it was such a waste of time but anyway so lol uh, yeah i quit that when like at the beginning of junior year um and then i was also on the swim team and on the dive team i applied to all the ucs except for merced and riverside so i got into uc santa cruz uc davis uc santa barbara uc san diego uh ucla and i got into berkeley early with the full ride and then i also got into usc and oh i also those are basically all the schools that i applied to and then I, the only other school that I applied to was Cal Poly Slow, and they waitlisted me. And I was like, oh my God, this cannot be real. Like, Dumbass. I'm never one to say anything, <laughs> but all you have to put in your, like, Cal State application is literally your GPA. It and might I'm have been yield like, protection. No, that's what everyone was telling me because I was like, I saw people from my school who got in with like a 3.7 unweighed, and I'm like, I have way yeah. higher of a gpa yeah. and i'm never one to say anything if they like factor in other stuff but i was like maybe it is yield protection because like mm. i had pretty close to a 4.0 and like no other school like even tried to like waitlist me you know but i mean i wasn't applying to like the craziest schools like i didn't apply to any ivs or like any east coast schools no yeah yeah so yeah. that was that i got a little lazy during college apps <laughs> Um, given the fact that we only have a couple minutes left, I did want to get through our segments really quick. Sorry, like we went on that big tangent, but like literally like all me and Christina talk about is Nicole Leno, The Bachelor, <laughs> Dance Moms, any other show that we're like watching at the moment and cheer or spirit. Yeah, true. So let's do our true false. So I'm going to be asking you a series of true false questions. You have to answer whether they're true or false. Okay. Um, if you want to elaborate on them, you can, but like kind of keep it limited, maybe like one or two sentences. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, true or false? Pookie is fat. Um, True. And everyone <laughs> says it. True or false, you can do a kick full of basket. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I can't. Wait. But also, no one's ever explained to me how to do one. Guys, like, don't quote <laughs> me on Malia. this. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I actually need to. Um, true or false, you have a boyfriend named... No, I don't. Who is this Do you want me to bleep man? that name or do you, want, do you want me to leave it in? I don't, I don't care. <laughs> um, I actually don't have a boyfriend named... Fun facts. <laughs> um, true or false? Do you know what a child lock is? No, now I do. Oh my god! I wanted to get a new car, and my actual car. I was trying to find reasons to like tell my mom, like, hey, like maybe I do need a new car. Um, and so one day my child lock was on, and Grant was like, and I was like, oh my god, my car's broken. And then he just checked the car, and it was. 
just switched on so <laughs> lol um next one sure false you know what a stove vent is no well actually i learned because grant turned on my stove vent i literally am not a functioning adult like there's just no way i'm real she was so. like burning burgers or like she was making a beef or turkey patty yeah or something. it was probably like ground turkey or some shit like so that she, and then it started smoking and then she was like ah and then like the smoke detector went <laughs> off and i was like you can turn on your vent and she's like what's that <laughs> so then i went in her microwave and i was like boop true or false you can do a shoulder sit um <laughs> now we can oh my gosh me and grant during a morning practice before a game we did a shoulder sit and then fell back and then i ran into the stunt group behind me and we knocked it down so they were doing a prep and we knocked them down like, yeah and i will take responsibility for this because i didn't lift you high enough no no, no, like, no. My head that was me too because i was overcompensating so i <laughs> i like pushed pulled myself back the second time and yeah i fucked up it was so. literally the biggest joke the entire season of us to be like oh my god like our shoulder sit won't hit like because here's the thing like my sophomore year and her junior year we had four stunt groups there was an even 16 on the team but every so often like one person straight up could not show up so then like that one stunt group was fucked so there came a point where like for a couple games in a row there were three consistent stunt groups that would stand on like the usc formation and they do like their prep and like do their claps and because we were the two odd ones out we would just do a shoulder <laughs> sit oh my god so so then for the rest of the season we were like oh my god i was actually nervous sit. though i think grant was like joking but i was just genuinely nervous i was like no, I know. the hardest like <laughs> <laughs> thing we had to do all year okay next one true or false you were a figure skater <gasps> I was. I figure skated all throughout growing up. And now I can't do a single skill because like I think... how many it, years, though? Uh, I think only about, like, six, maybe. So oh, that's nothing, still significant, though. Yeah, nothing too... I quit, like... I, it was, like, really early, like, r around middle school or something oh, like that. Oh, the camera's probably going to turn off in a second. Just, no, Ooh. but you can keep uh -huh. talking. But, yeah, and now um, I think my cankles would break if I put <laughs> um, skates on. <laughs> True or false, you showed up to Saturday morning practice hungover one time. Oh, my God! <laughs> Um, since I'm graduated, I will, um, s you know, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna deny anything, but I'm not going to promote. Yeah. I'm not gonna, you know, No, and don't like if you're no comment, you're going to get kicked off the team. If you do that, like, actually, yeah, like, I, the contract is going to be specific. So if you're listening in your own spirit, like I'm literally will find you and we'll cut off all your hair. If you show up hungover or high or drunk to anything, I even practice. When I had a good time with my friends the night before, and you know I'm a short girl, so I guess it didn't like my liver didn't process it all or something. I don't know, you know. I'm just speculating, and I will not confirm or deny anything. But that was an unfortunate day. Uh, but nothing. Which game was that? Too explicit happened. Um. I mean, which game did this allegedly happen at? Okay, last true or false, you have a stalker that makes fan cams of you! Oh my god, fun fact. So, I remember... I, I don't know why I remember when this happened, but junior year, December, I was studying for my anatomy final, and I was playing Nobody Gets Me on my floor um, of my house, and then I get a text from Madison, and Madison, our teammate, was like, oh my god, check YouTube, like, I found a fan cam of you, and I was like, what the hell? So I, like, check, and it's, like, the most atrocious video of me, and I, like, can't keep a smile, so if you ever, like, if you've ever seen me at a game, like, I will smile for a few seconds, and I'll drop it, and it just goes, like, this so you can like see in the video that, that that's like what i'm doing and it was during like the go cadence too yeah. and i hate the you go can cadence. find it too on youtube like literally search up christina fan cam usc mm. it'll pop up they put her full first name yeah in the title of they the YouTube spelled video. my name right too because my name starts with a k and everyone <laughs> like found it on the Instagram. yeah exactly and my my instagram like handle is not my first I know. name when she followed me for the first time like when we were on comp cheer i was like who the fuck just trying to follow me and you're like oh that's me <laughs> yeah so i don't know how they found me yeah next segment this one is called rapid fire but that's apt because we're trying to get through these questions quick i'm going to ask you 10 <laughs> questions answer them as quickly as possible but they're just fun questions you shouldn't have prepared answers for them um okay number one if you had to lose one of your five senses which one would you lose and why <laughs> regarding the fact that like if the assumption that like if you lost your like uh -huh. sense of smell like your taste would not be affected oh okay i don't know how that would um, work but yeah then it would definitely be smell okay okay it seems like the most... and if it was if it did have a contributing to your taste what would you get rid of yeah it'd still be small oh okay yeah. uh, okay <laughs> um number two how many guinea pigs do you want and what would you name them <gasps> oh my god so i want three and i don't know how i would take care of all of them because that's kind of a lot but it would be what was it like Harvey Halstein? Ha no, Harvey Halston and Hangarilla. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Um, number three, what is your favorite pookie fit? And we can pop up <gasps> a picture on the screen. Oh my it. God. Wait, I really 
have to think about it. Give me like a top two then. Okay, he has this like candy corn um <laughs> dress with like a tutu and it has like a Peter Pan collar and it says sweet as can or something like oh the shirt says like wicked sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a dress with a collar and a tutu, and there's like candy corn on the tutu, and it's like black and orange, and then the collar is also orange. Oh my god. Yeah. Like That's your not... favorite? Yes. Okay. Me thinks. Number four, what is one thing on your wish list right now? Not your grocery uh, list, like wish list. Like... Um, I wish for peace. I do not no. want to have these random. Number five, what's your favorite, like snacky? Like snacky. Up. Um, uh, Lucky for you, it's sitting right in front of you. It's the Siete um, Chili Lime Puffs. I almost ate this entire fucking bag earlier. So hopefully it is. These are the best things ever. I will literally pull up to Whole Foods. I don't even shop at Whole Foods, but I will come there just for that. Number six, when your car does break down, what would be your dream car? <gasps> oh my God. I want an Audi Q3, but like a black one perhaps with dark interior because my sister drives one with like a light interior and i literally yeah i know my asshole's gonna like literally burn (laughs) off but i am clumsy and i will spill everything in it no that's fair Mm -hmm. and i no, i I, yeah yeah i'm not built for um next one do you know how to make any viet dishes and which (gasps) ones do you know how to make vow so i don't know how to make anything because only meal prep is salad wait actually yeah oh wow oh i, I wow. thought that was a oh <laughs> no i was just yeah. wondering i was genuinely curious. i actually don't know how to cook anything i literally grant has seen i i feel like i only meal prep salad but he taught me how to make tuna salad the other day it's literally three ingredients oh, whatever <laughs> but i love tuna salad yes. i love tuna salad if you don't like tuna i'm so sorry you're missing out on an alternative source of protein and it's really easy just open that can add some mayo <laughs> dig in number eight explain the meaning of hang gorilla and the other names <gasps> Okay, so my middle name is Hang and it's in Viet, and then Gorilla, there's no meaning behind it. But Just my animal. yeah, my best friend and I in sixth grade or like fifth grade even, because that's when I got Instagram, I think. Um, well, she and I made this bet. We were like, "Hey, we're gonna make our like handles like Hang Gorilla and Jazz Moo Moo, and then we're gonna end up changing it." And this was probably like, this was in like I don't even know when then. Let's see. Was this like in the, the early 2010s? And we've never changed it. So now everyone knows us by Hangorilla and Jasmine Wu. No, literally. I have her handle in my um, phone as Hangorilla. And sometimes I'll be on my laptop and I'll look up Hangorilla, but it won't pop up because mm-hmm. I've ever asked Christina in my laptop. So I'm like, where the fuck is Hangorilla? And then it's like, Christina. And I'm like, oh, yeah, fuck. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, and then her sister's Chris Turtle, as we mentioned before. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, nine. Where would you live and work for the rest of your life if like work logistics weren't an issue? Like if you didn't have to like go into an office or something like that? Like oh. where would you just like live? I want to live on a farm. Yay! In the middle of nowhere. But I don't know how, like, reasonable that is. No, I know. Because, like, I want my grocery, like, my grocery store. Yeah. But in an ideal world, I want to live in a farm in the middle of nowhere and vibe and... That's peaceful. Have peace. Yeah. Um, Yeah, peace. That's the number (laughs) one. That's literally it. Peace, Um, peace. Number 10. Has there ever been a time you talked shit about me? And what was it about? (gasps) I will not get mad. I'm just genuinely curious. I'm trying to... I don't, I don't even think so. Cause I feel like if I were to say anything, I would say it to your face, okay, that's you know, true. like, and I don't think there's any, like, I don't think there's anything bad I would say about you. Okay. You Has know? there ever been a time where I've annoyed you? No, not really. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering. Hi, I'm wearing a sweatshirt and Christina's wearing a puffer jacket cause it got cold in here all of a sudden. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I basically forgot to film one of the like weekly segments that I was supposed to make, like a weekly segment. Um, but I'm just going to interject now in the middle of the video and do it now um, with Christina's loud ass jacket. Sorry. I'm joking. Um, but it's TikToks. I was supposed to film TikTok, or I was supposed to show you the TikToks of the week. Oh, okay. I thought you said um, to film TikToks. So I was like, oh, God, oh, I don't no. know if I'm there. <laughs> so I like liked some TikToks, so I'm going to show you them. Have you been wondering how to elevate your life? <gasps> no. It's a blazer. Elevate to a smart, casual look. Oh my god. Holy shit. Those are like shiny, bro. Oh my god. I liked this and I didn't watch the full video. You know who would wear that? Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing is just the... Okay, so let me get this straight. Some girl on the internet by the name Nicole Leno posted a video of her getting rejected 
And instead of fans, you know, commenting nice things, being supportive, and just showing their love to her, Yon instead went to the college's social media accounts, which are controlled by social media managers, not the admission people. Yeah. And now there's fan commenting for them to let her in, even though they already rejected her. Remember, guys, she is not your sister, she's not your cousin, she is not your friend, she is some girl on the internet. And she did not ask for y'all to do that. She got accepted and committed to a nice school, so let's let her read. Let's also remember that UCLA has an acceptance rate of 9%, 91% do not get accepted. Yeah, it's been a pretty dry week for, like, TikToks because so much of my FYP has been Turkish Quandale Dingle. That's crazy. I've never seen that shit on my, um... No, ever. and there's a reason... Oh, I just saw this one! Oh, sorry, I just blew out the mic. Oh, my God! <laughs> So next we can move into our obsessions. Um, I will keep mine super, super quick and then Christine will do hers also very quick because we have like five minutes before I need to go for dinner and I actually held her over. So I'm sorry about that, Christina. It's okay. Um, first obsession, new, like new segment, like mini segment because it's under obsessions, like Meal prep of the week because I meal prep, of course. Um, I always meal prep. This is just I'm mentioning it now because I think I'm gonna change my meal prep next week. So like, I'll talk about it next week again. Breakfast as usual is eggs and peppers. Um, and then I also have Oikos Pro yogurt and some mm -hmm. berries. And then I have a whole wheat English muffin. And then yeah, that's what I eat every morning. Um, lunch is tuna salad with veggies, so spinach, cucumber, and onion, pretzel crisps, and a sliced Yum. apple. And I put the TikTok last week of the person that I took that recipe from, but dinner I also took from this person, so I'll put the TikTok on the screen of what I made my dinner after, which was deconstructed lettuce wraps. So it's basically like ground chicken, um, like a teriyaki sauce, like zucchini, carrots, onion, um, and that's just like microwaved and then you have like a little bit of rice on the side and then you are supposed to eat it with lettuce wraps but because trader joe's doesn't carry like full butter lettuce heads i just have like um loose lettuce that i put on top yeah. as like a salad and then for snacks um christina and logan put me on to chopsticks so it's just like an extra like 10 grams of protein that i get each day so it's a really nice thing to eat especially if i'm in class it's like really inconspicuous i can just eat my chomp and then yeah. <laughs> um, movies TV, me and Christina have been watching So Sharp recently. It's not necessarily spin off of Dance Moms. It's like Dance Moms adjacent, though, because of Riley Vertez and Jill Vertez. Um, but it's after the Louisville Ladybirds, they're on a dance team, and it's like one season, 10 episodes. Um, shot like Dance Moms with confessionals and stuff like that. It's a really entertaining show. Um, I love it. Um, unfortunate that I had to end, but Todd Sharp got arrested, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Music. I've been listening to literally like whatever I've been listening to at the gym. So Guts by Olivia Rodrigo. Oh my God. <gasps> um, Igor by Tyler the Creator. And I've been falling asleep every single night to Minecraft soundtrack Slowed with Rain on Bro. Spotify. <laughs> That's crazy. It's a little podcast episode. I downloaded it for plane rides. I haven't needed it like in a while, but I've been needing it recently to fall asleep. It's like my melatonin. Yeah, melatonin. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't want to say melanin accidentally. <laughs> That's my melanin. Other um, <laughs> obsessions is saying like hello or like like hello. Like I think I've been saying that a lot recently, which I need to like get away from. So I'll stop saying it after this week. But like, <laughs> I just like saying like hello, like after talking shit. And then other obsessions was hating on people. But again, we're stopping that. <laughs> I will. I will start being more peaceful now. Okay, Christina. Obsessions. Okay, wait. What should I start with again? Did we? Did you start with shows? Or? Um, I started with food? my food. Ooh. Okay. Um. Every morning I'll eat like, um. A like plain like non-fat unsweetened yogurt and then i'll like put a little bit of like organic granola on there and like some Yum. fruit and then some like peanut butter and i'll, I'll drizzle like Ooh. a bit of honey it's so good That's um so but then i ran out of yogurt so i'm probably gonna just eat <laughs> oats and chia seeds and stuff now and then for i only like eat i feel like like it's, it's so boring but like ground turkey and like chicken and then like i'll make a salad um and then i feel like i eat out unfortunately like a decent amount so just depending on what i'm doing then uh with shows yeah i feel like the only shows i'm really watching are the ones that i watch with grant so right now it's so sharp we just finished the bachelor lol um i'm not a big like shows or movies person because i'm like a spaz and a tweaker so i literally cannot sit still for long enough like i i just won't like i have like the attention span of like a uh convulsing like rat so anyways nothing on that end but uh crap what else can i mention what are the other categories perhaps music i oh my gosh okay so hmm some of my favorite artists i'd say are like off the top of my head jordan davis uh 
Bailey Zimmerman, Thomas Rhett sings my favorite country song, and it's been on my Spotify repeat since uh, like last fall. And then Olivia Rodrigo's um, "Stranger," I think that's the best song in her album. It's, oh, is that on like the same version? Yeah. Uh huh. I also let's see what else I can mention. What o- what other categories did you do? I did like an other category, like if you enjoy like doing a particular like hobby or something. Oh, I need some fucking hobbies. Um, yeah, I need even like an activity. Like I literally said, like my recent obsession has been saying hello, like oh. <laughs> and like um, hating well, on people. I've been saying vow a lot. Yes. Unfortunately, I don't know where that came from. So she says vow. She said welcome, welcome one time. Yeah, lol. So that's the new thing, I guess. Um, I feel like aside well, from that. you said you didn't know why you said it, but do you want to give them the reason um, that you gave me <laughs> for why you say vow? So basically, I started saying vow to my dog whenever he did something that was kind of exciting. So maybe like if he like pointed his eyes at me or something like that, you know, or if I was bored and I wanted to bother him. And so Pookie just understands vow better than wow. So that's okay. That. And on that note, um, I think it can bring this episode to a close. So thank you so much, Christina, for being here. Oh my gosh, of course. Um, I had a good little discussion. I always like shooting a show with Christina. That's my favorite thing to do is just talk <laughs> with her. Um, and yeah, do you have anything to add? Anything for the people? Any tips? Um, anything to leave them with? I don't know. Um, maybe sit up straight so that your back your back doesn't break when you're like 25. Because I think my back is like giving out on me. But thank you so much for having me. I had yeah. so much funsies. Absolutely. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure to like up this video if you enjoyed it. Please make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified next time that I post. As usual, all my socials will be linked in the description box below. If you're listening to this on Spotify, make sure to rate this podcast and also follow for more episodes and share it with your friends because I think this would be a fun little podcast to share especially when we bring on some recurring guests and we can start building up some more like talking points so we're not just like bringing on new like side characters Mm -hmm. um from this podcast and my vlog channel that like you just see and you get to find out a little bit more maybe we can start building a parasocial relationship and you become obsessed with me um who knows (laughs) but other than that thank you so much for listening and i hope you have a great rest of your day Bye, guys. Bye. Spread positivity. Girl.